want to do well. It just so happened that he's just not coming up with the ball. Here's Engel now with a runner at first. Nobody out. Here's the pitch by Hickey. Fastball over the outside corner. Strike off. Rusty Coons playing way over towards center. Lemon straightaway center. Lemon has walked three times in a row today. Now ready. From the belt, the pitch to instead goes over to first base. You know, we gave you all the names of the designers and uh, the winner, and it's uniform number two, designed by Richard Launius. The winner, the winning designer, in addition to the prestige of designing the new White Sox uniform, will receive two season passes for next year's games. And additionally, Mr. Lonius and his wife Carolyn will be sent to the World Series this year, guest of the White Sox. Now the pitch. He tried to bunt and he bunted foul. The other five finalists also will receive a very precious gift. They'll receive free trips to the White Sox spring training site in Sarasota during in Sarasota, Florida during the month of March next spring. So congratulations are in order to Richard Lonius of Dayton, Ohio, the winning designer, Bruce Johnson of Chicago, Scott Barrows of Dallas, and Edward Supe, Michael Lewis, and William Kligas, all of Chicago. Now the pitch is high. Two strikes and a ball. This is WGN Television 9, Chicago, America's number one sports station. Now Hickey gets set. The pitch to Angle. Double play ball right to Omen. Out at second, out at first, double play. Six, four, three. The ball was hit hard, but right at Bill Omen. So that helps. Here now is Tim Cochran. He was out on strikes. He single and he drew a very important base on balls in the set. A funny Lou how. It seems like whenever you see scoring innings, bases on balls are involved somewhere. Oh, they, they most certainly are. And of course, uh, Dave Engel was a big out there, Harry. He started off that big inning last inning with a base hit to center field, and he hit the ball hard this time and turns into a double play. Here's a Cochran hitting a line drive to right field for a hit. So it's a good thing we got that double play. Let's see that again. Well, Hickey, we... Hickey really got a curveball in the middle of the plate. And because he does, uh, Cochran just didn't miss it. Here's Hatcher up there now. The pitch. A little tap foul. There's Cochran's base hit on the replay. Lined it into right hard. His second hit of the day. Two men are out. A runner at first base. Four to three, Minnesota. We're in the top of the seven. He held up in time. Mickey Hatcher. He's got two out of three today. Harry, on a, on a swing like that, when you're getting out of the way and spinning at the same time, I, I really believe that a hitter really doesn't hold up. I think he goes all the way and spins around with the entire party. There's a drive, and the left field should be caught, and there's Nart Hagen to make the play. Hatcher lined to Nart Hagen. No runs, one hit, one error, one left. We go now into the bottom of the seventh, the score, Minnesota four, White Sox three.
Larry Carey and Lou Brock, we go into the bottom of the seventh inning, four to three in favor of the Twins, and here's Carlton Fisk to lead it off. Bob Veselik, the right-hander, delivers, and the curveball is high inside, ball one. One ball, no strikes, nobody on, nobody out. The score, four to three. The White Sox with four errors, three of them by Jay Laviglio playing third. There's a strike on the outside corner. McCanna now playing third base. He's a Chicago area boy. That's second base, rather. We have uh, Hatcher at third, Washington is short, McCanna now playing second, and Herbeck at first. A ball and a strike to pitch outside. Two balls and a strike. There's a chance for Kevin Hickey to win his first major league game. But the White Sox are going to have to score a couple of runs. The pitch. There's a line drive. Nobody will get that ball. Extra bases in the left center. Fisk is on his way to second base with a stand-up double. There's a good beginning. Fisk double to left center. It is a good beginning. Here it is again. He hit a good pitch, Harry. That ball was down away from him, and he just thread the, the needle in left center field. And had not Ward come up with a good play, Kick that ball at all, Carlson could have gone all over, all the way to third base. But you can see him pulling up at second with a stand-up double. So now here's Essia. He's looking down at Bobby Winkle, a cannon who was born in Chicago, now lives in Pennsylvania, now playing second base. The pitch. He bounced. It's a beauty. The only play, first base, a sacrifice. So Rusty Coons will be the hitter, but they, he's going to be called back. Bobby Molinaro coming out. That's a tying run at third. Molinaro is going to bat here for Coons. Harry, that was a good sacrifice by Essien. He butted the ball right back towards the pitcher. The pitcher has dropped off the mound towards third base, expecting the ball down the third baseline. And because of that, there was some hesitation on the part of uh, the first baseman, Herbert. And of course, the pitcher finally picked the ball up and threw the first. All right, the tying run is at third base. A hundred children and volunteers from the Family Service Agency and Big Brothers Big Sister Program of DeKalb County are here today. Now the pitch to Molinero, and he slashes it foul outside third base. Andy the bell ringer Tatusco here today. The pitch. Fastball outside. The catcher, Tim Laudner, takes a look down at Carlton Fisk. Congratulations to John Moscato and his wife on their 50th wedding anniversary. The pitch to Molinero bouncing ball to the shortstop. He kicks it. The tying run is in. So it's all tied up four and four. Molinero, a high hopper. Ron Washington charged the ball. Harry, he takes his eye off the ball. He looked in the home plate to see if he had a chance, as you can see there, and that's one of the reasons he boosts this ball. He's looking, trying to pick the ball up at the same time, trying to make a decision whether to throw home at the first, and he can't do that without the ball. So Bobby Molinaro will be credited with a run batted in. He gets the benefit of the doubt there. And the shortstop is charged with an error. Here's Allman hitting a double play ball to the third baseman. The cannon one, first base safe. Boy, Allman goes down that line hard. Well, it does, and of course, Hatchie, 
took a lot of time getting that ball out of his glove, and because of that, allow a guy like Almond, who runs real well, to get the first base. You can see it here, and he just takes off. He knows the ball not in there. He has a chance of beating this ball, and see how much time he takes to get rid of that ball? He really didn't have the handle on it. Here now is Laveglio. He's one out of three today. Here's the pitch by Maselic. There goes the runner. There's the peg. He is safe for the stolen day. Almond steals second. All right, let's take a look at this. This is a good, good throw here. That ball, curveball is in the dirt. Almond had a good jump. And the reason he's called safe here, he goes around that tag on the hook slide. He reaches back and touches the bag with his hand, grabs it. Otherwise, he'd gone at that bag. It would have been out. That's a 16th stolen base for Bill, for Bill Allman. He is second to Ron LaFleur on the club, LaFleur having 36. The White Sox swiped 85 bases. Here's a pitch to Lamiglio. And a little bit low. Two balls, no strikes. Just the go-ahead run at second base. Two out. Laviglio, one out of three, right-handed batter. Ball is high. Three balls, no strikes. White Sox trying for the first victory over Minnesota. It's only the fifth game. Minnesota won the first three there, and first one here last night. Three balls, no strikes. Breaking ball with three and zero, and he got it over. Nice hander and a right hander in the bullpen. I'm sorry, Harry. That was unusual for a three-zero pitch to a guy like Lavigliglio. But uh, the fact is that he threw it. There's a bouncing ball on the end of the inning. The cannons got it over the first of the out. So Lamiglio rolls out, but the White Sox have tied it up. One run, one hit, one air, one left. At the end of the seventh, all tied at four. to the top of the eighth. Nard Hagen has moved over to play right field, and Leo Sutherland is now in left field for the White Sox. Kevin Hickey stays in the ballgame. The last game of the year tomorrow afternoon. Hundreds of prizes worth thousands of dollars will be given away on Fans Appreciation Day. Prizes include a one-week all-expense-paid trip for two to Puerto Rico with accommodations at the fabulous Dorado Beach Hotel compliments the Regency International Hotels and Eastern Airline. Also, White Sox season tickets, microwave ovens, barbecue grills, color TVs, refrigerator freezers, and lots, lots more. That's prize day here tomorrow afternoon. Here we go on the eighth. First pitch swung and this. Gary Ward, who's one out of three, drove in a run. Kevin Hickey. Looking for his first big league victory. One strike or nothing. The pitch. Inside and high to even it up. A ball and a strike. The Mets lead over Montreal has been cut to one. Three to two. Popped it up. That ought to be easy for somebody. Nard Hagen coming in calling for it. And he makes the catch. Boy, he's staggered under that ball. One out. Yes, he did, Harry. pretty tough. Yeah, he came a long ways to catch that ball. Bernadette had a chance of calling him off, but uh, North Hagen called for it, and he, because of that, he had to run a long ways, and at the last minute, barely hung on to it. You can see it almost pops out here. The final broadcast, the final game tomorrow, and the final broadcast will be out in the center field bleachers. The game is underway at 1.15, so I hope you'll come out and sit there in the sunshine with us. Have a chance to kibitz and visit. Right there, in that very spot. Where will your booth be tomorrow, Harry? Right next to the right next to television. The TV.
camera. There's a strike call. Two strikes and nothing on the left-hand hitter, Ken Herbeck. Herbeck is one out of two. Kevin Hickey, who worked out of a big jam in the sixth. Now the delivery, here it is. Wild one, back to the screen. Four thousand seven hundred and sixteen paid today. <laughs> Two strikes and the ball. One out with the eighth of pitch swung on. High pop foul back. <laughs> I thought for a minute we might get a souvenir here, but. <laughs> No chance. Your glove was too big. The net. <laughs> uh, the pitch. Here it is. Breaking ball low. Kent Herbeck. Two balls, two strikes. One out, nobody on. Left-hand batter digging in. Uh, the pitch. Swung on a bouncing ball. That'll be easy. Bernazard over the first for the out. Bernazard has committed only five errors all year long. Make that six. And Bill Almond's made only 17 around short and second. A total of only 23 errors. Harry, that's a remarkable feat in as much as uh, in, in, in American League, there's not as many ballpark with AstroTurf, and you can see that kind of a low total for AstroTurf, but for natural surface, Here's a pitch. Popped up. Nard Higgins there. Easy out. Yeah, I think you're right, Lou. It's uh, for AstroTurf, it might not be quite as outstanding as it is for natural surface with the dirt and the grass. And so they certainly bolstered their defense around second base. We go now into the bottom of the eighth, tied up 4-4. Four, four. Harry Carey back in the ballpark. We go now to the bottom of the eighth. We have all the good hitters coming up. Mike, Mark Andrews from DeKalb, Illinois here, celebrating his 10th birthday today. We have Bernazard leading it off, followed by Lemon and Lezinski. Chet Lemon, who's just been red hot the second half, has walked three times in a row today. This being our final telecast, we'd be remiss indeed. We didn't acknowledge all the wonderful people who make these telecasts possible. Besides our producer director, Dick Flanders, and our assistant director, Joe Corneo, our engineers are Daryl Rawson and Ed Alma, Janet Butler Blair, Vern Blakely, John Breister, Nancy Burns, Roy Cohn, Don Hall, Frank Hullick, Mary Ellen Harnage, I remember her, Sandy Ioni. There's a first pitch swung on, a high pop foul. Laudner's there and he has it. Bernazard foul to the catcher, Laudner. One gone, that'll bring up Chet Lemon. Alvin Jones, Ray Kirk, Rich Lee, Mike Mitnick, Bruce Moselle. John Nitz, Jim Pasma, Joanne Frijoda, Lowell Ryman, who's out in center field today, Willie Sneed, Steve Stabile, and Earl Whitman. So you can tell from that list how many people it takes to do one of these programs that you've been enjoying, I hope, during the course of the year. A ball and a strike on Chet Lemon, who'd like to hit one out of here. Having walked three times in a row, and he tried to bunt his way on. Wasn't a bad try, Harry. Hatcher was way back at third base, on the line, trying to prevent the, the extra base hit. 
again, the White Sox been trying it all day to drop that ball down, but have not been, had not succeeded up to now. Brett Burns limbering up with the bullpen. pen. Two strikes and the ball, the pitch. Hey, struck him out. Well, Lazinski hit a homer with a man on in the fourth to give the White Sox a temporary three to one lead. Now he comes up again. He is tied for second place in the American League in homers, just one behind Bobby Gritch of the Angel. Gritch has 22. Lazinski, along with Tony Armas and Garmin Thomas, has 21. Now the wind, the pitch. And the breaking ball is outside. One ball, no strikes. Two men are gone, eighth inning. The pitch. Wide and outside and low. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Detroit leading in Milwaukee. One to nothing. A real pitching duel, Mars, against Vukovic. Here's a strike called to the bull. Lazinski with 21 homers, 62 runs batted in. Now to wind up the pitch by Veselik. High pop fly on the infield. Ron Washington, the shortstop, makes the catch to retire the side. One, two, three, nothing across. At the end of eight, it's tied at four. as we go down to the top of the ninth. Roy Smalley's going to come out as a pinch hitter for Washington. Smalley, who's a switch hitter ordinarily, but because of a back problem, he's only been able to play batting right-handed. He's hitting 300 right-handed, 238 left-handed. He's had seven homers, 22 RBI. Rice Smalley. Was his dad playing when you started? No, he was not. Uh, Roy Smalley, I, I got to know him, but I never really played against uh, his father. Roy Smalley. Actually, Roy is not a junior. He's Roy Smalley the third. His dad was Roy Smalley Jr. Here's the pitch by Hickey. Ground ball up the middle of the base hit. That didn't take long. Smalley steps Cole off the bench. Hits the first pitch right up the middle for a base hit. Now let's see if he's going to stay in the ball game. I would imagine he's going to have to because he'll have to play in their infield. Now here is Hoskins Powell due to come up. Now they're going to use a pinch runner. It looks like Sofield running for Smalley. Yeah, that's the change they'll make it. Boy, you know, there you are. We talked about Castino. Look at Smalley now. There's a guy that's only 28 years old. And he can't hardly bend over. Oh, wow. With a back ailment. Here's Hoskins Powell. He hit into a double play with the bases loaded in the sixth. There's a ball. Curveball in there for a strike call. He's squared around the bunt with the bases loaded and one out in the sixth and the twins already had four to three Powell grounded into a double play against Hickey now the pitch he bunts they got to play it second and they get it safe at first Powell trying to sacrifice Forced Baker. Take a look at it, Harry. He, he really pushes this ball very hard right back at Hickey, and Hickey jumps all over it, turns, and just throw the second, make sure he made a good throw. And of course, Almond flips on to first base, but a guy like Hoskin Power, who run real well, there's no chance. And now it's Pete McCannon. Boy, Hickey makes that play as good as anybody we have. Better, probably. He's a good athlete. He gets off the mound in a hurry. He's quick. McCannon's batting 229 with four homers and 18 RBIs. Their team batting average is 238. Ours is 271. 
Curveball, nice stop by Essien. Saved a wild pitch. They have hit 47 homers. The White Sox have hit 74. Take another look at this ball. Here's a, he saw a catcher being acrobatic. He scoops that ball out of the dirt, bounced it in the air, then caught it on the fly with his bare hand. Here's a double play ball, maybe. No, 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 to throw the first. He beats it. The ball was hit towards short. That's why I said it might be a double play, but then it took a real high hop. And Allman had to wait for it and finally had to jump to field it. And his throw was too late. It's an infield hit for McCannon. Harry made the right choice in terms of what base to throw to because Hoskin Power was already down to second base. He run real well. And Bill recognized him that if he had a chance at all of getting one out, it would be at first base with Pete McCannon. So here now comes uh, manager Tony La Russa, Kevin Hickey, with runners at first and second. One out. Yep. So Hickey cannot win the game today. He leaves tied 4-4, and the only chance he'll have to win a game this season is if Hughes he gets into a game in a comparable situation tomorrow. Hickey worked three in the third innings, and he pitched out of a real jam in the sixth for Dennis Lamp. He allowed four hits. No runs as yet, but the responsibility for the men on base belongs to him. Lamar Hoyt coming in to relieve. White Sox really playing this one down to the hilt, trying to win it. Hoyt, who's won eight, lost three, and who has ten saves. The batter facing him will be Dave Engel. Angle is one out of four for the day. Kevin Hickey walked. Only one man, and that was defensively. Harrison's going to left field. Sutherland is moving. Looks like to center. So Chet Lemon will leave the game. Lemon. I guess they figured Lemon's arm uh, would not permit him to make a strong throw to the plate in the event of a base hit. And that's the go-ahead run at second base. Here's Engel now, and Lamar White is ready. So Lemon is through for, for this day. He was nothing out of one. Walked three times in a row, scored a run. Angle, right hand batter. Lamar Hyde's pitch. Curveball a little bit inside and high. Angle, originally a third baseman. Now I've been playing right field. Has a fine arm, pretty good hitter. He's hit five homers, several of them against the White Sox. Line drive right to the third baseman for a double play. Holy cow. That ball was hit like a shot. Angle line into a double play from Laviglio to Bernazar. And the White Sox get out of the inning. Look at that. Harry, they took a chance and threw him a fastball. And again, the big guy didn't miss it. Right on the button. No runs, two hits, no errors, one left. We go to the bottom of the ninth. The White Sox need one to win. The game tied up for all. Harry back at the ballpark along with Lou Brock. We go into the bottom of the ninth, needing a run to win. Here's Wayne Nardhagen. The Red Sox shut out Cleveland four to nothing. Tanana the winner. Brennan the loser. Leads Northwestern 50 to nothing in the fourth period. Illinois leading Minnesota 31 to 21 in the fourth quarter.
Montreal has taken the lead four to three in New York. If they hold it, they will have won the Eastern Division. Michigan leading Indiana now in football 30 to 17 after trailing earlier in the game. Nard Hagen leading it off the pitch swung and he missed. He's in the hole now. Two strikes and the ball. Notre Dame leading Michigan State 20 to 7 in the third quarter. 20 to 7 Notre Dame. Here's a pitch swung on fly ball right center field on the run is Engel waiting now and he makes the catch. Nard Hagen fly to Engel one out. Dave Baldus and Dave Upwin from Fremont, Michigan, watching the ball game here today. Detroit leading Milwaukee one to nothing at the end of seven. Raleigh Fingers is relieved for the Brewers in the eighth. Boy, that Morris and Vukovic, some battle. Here's Carlton Fisk, takes a strike off. Fisk opened the seventh inning with a double that led to the tying run. Now the sign. One strike and nothing. The pitch swung and a breaking ball and he missed. One man out, two strikes and nothing. Harry, I'd like to say congratulations to Dr. Jones and a friend of mine, Deacon Jones, on their newborn baby boy, who was born yesterday, Kali e. Jones. Yeah, good. One out, nobody on. Ball game in the bottom of the ninth. 4-4 tie. Now the pitch on the way by Veselik swung on fly ball. Short left field, Hoskin Powell, misjudging and a drop. Powell's had a tough day. That was a routine fly ball. Hoskin Powell must have thought it was hit very hard. He started back. Well, Harry, you can see that was a high slider, and Carlton Fisk got it off the end of the bat, had the big swing. When you get the big swing, you force the outfielder to back up. A hole is ground, and that time, Harskin Powell made the step back and could not recover in time to get there to make the catch. And so the Sox got a break on that ball. And now, here is Jim Essien. Here's the stretch. The pitch. A breaking ball in the first strike call. One strike and nothing. Cardinals winning their game, but now Montreal has taken the lead in New York. And that would clinch it if Montreal can hold that lead. They will play the, the Phillies in the National League playoffs. Now the stretch. There's the pitch. High pop foul coming back out of play. Detroit hanging tough against Milwaukee, one to nothing in the eighth. If Detroit wins, it'll send that second half of the American League East into the last day at Milwaukee, where the winner tomorrow would win it all and would qualify to play the Yankees. Now the stretch. Throw over to first, the runner back. Carlton Fisk has a good lead at first base, and and of course they keep messing around. He's in position to take second base. Two strikes and nothing. The pitch, pitch out not going anywhere. Baker's playing shortstop in place of Washington. Boy, the White Sox got a break in the ninth inning one with runners at first and second. Lamar Hoyt relieved Kevin Hickey. And Engel hit a blistering low line drive that happened to be fortunately right at Laviglio for a double play. There's a strike call. And Essien is called out on strike. 
Two men are gone. Harry, I'm not sure he saw that ball. There's a shadow out there, and Essien uh, really didn't make any offer at that pitch. There was a fastball right over the plate, and apparently he just probably didn't see it. Here now is Leo Sutherland. Came up with the White Sox last year. He's hitting 125. He's only been to bat eight times this year. The throw over to first. Fisk is back. Two men are out. We're in the ninth. All tied up 4-4. Now the pitch. The Selig Veselix pitch is a fastball low and away. V-S-E-L-I-C. Bob Veselik. Now the stretch, the pitch, and the curveball is high. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Leo Sutherland looking at Bobby Winkle. 4,716 paid here today. Final game of the season tomorrow afternoon. 115. Two balls, no strikes, the pitch. Ball three is high. Bill Allman coming up next. Three balls, no strikes. There you see Tony LaRusso. Ball four, he walked up. Boy, oh boy, when you walk a 125 hitter on four pitches, you deserve to get beat. And all Bill Allman have, would have to do is get a base hit to make that happen. Well, of course, he threw a borderline pitch, a pretty good fastball. He, he thought he had the call, but he went against uh, uh, the Twins, and now the Sox has the winning run at second base if Bill Allman could just dump that ball in there for a base hit. Now the signal given. First pitch in there, a strike off. One strike and nothing. Runners at first and second, two out. We're in the bottom of the ninth, tied up at four. The pitch to Allman, outside. And that evens it up, a ball and a strike. Right-hander gets set. Base hit would win it. The delivery, swung at a curve, and he missed. And now it's two strikes and a ball. A base hit here by Alma would make Lamar White's record identical this year to last year, nine and three. Veselik. The pitch. Into the dirt. Almost a wild pitch. The count even. Two balls, two strikes. Harry Veselik did a fine job to get that second strike on Bill Allman. He had thrown him that hard fastball away, hard sliders away, and threw a change up in the middle of the plate. And you saw Bill really go around on that ball and way out in front of it. They had no idea where that ball was. Two balls, two strikes. Here's a big pitch. On the way. Did he go around? They're appealing no. It was a slider blowing away. Allman checked his swing just in time. So he's still alive with Jay Lamiglio on deck. Two out. The runners will be going with the pitch. Three balls, two strikes. Now the signal given. The right hand batter waiting. Here it is. Ball four, the bases are loaded. Billy 
Billy Gardner, the manager of the Twins, is not very happy about this development. The inning should have been over one, two, three. The left fielder, Hoskin Powell, miscalculated on an easy fly ball and let it drop in front of him. I think he was hit much harder and starting back towards the wall. And then, with two out, successive bases on ball. The National Rodeo will be at the Amphitheater tonight and tomorrow. Bases loaded, two away. The score tied. And Jerry Turner is coming out as a pinch hitter. Turner, who's one out of 11 with the White Sox, used to be with the San Diego Padres. This guy's got a good swing. Because he can, he has put the bat on the ball, put it on it hard. Uh, he hit in tough luck, and is a good hitter, as you pointed out. And he's a fastball pitcher against a good fastball hitter. So Jerry Turner, the hitter, bases are loaded with two out. Score tied in the bottom of the ninth. The pitch, way outside. Maybe this guy will walk another one. Well, he, he hadn't been close to the plate. Uh, since Carlton Fisk dumped that ball down the left field line, and since then, Harry has seemed to have lost control. He's walked Sutherland and Allman in succession. Here's the pitch to Turner. Ball two! Two balls, no strikes. He's going to have to let up to get the ball over, and Turner will be ready. Two balls, no strikes. Bob Veselic delivers the pitch. Ball three! What a way to win a ball game, but we'll take it. Yes, it will be interesting here. See if he can come back. He has, he has three chances to throw a strike, Harry, and I think it's pretty difficult to come back to throw three straight strikes with a guy like Turner at the plate, and you can't afford to throw the breaking ball. Here's the pitch. Strike call at the knees. Three balls and a strike. Bob Veselic has a record of 1-0. and That victory was at the expense of the White Sox. Now maybe we can hand him a loss to even it up. 3-1 pitch. Sox win. A base on balls. He 